All ready? Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Ask Dogfish. We've had over 150 questions for this week, which is pretty great. Ratings are off the charts. Probably gonna get picked up for a second season. So a uh, question that we get asked almost every week is why don't you distribute in my state? And the reason is because we are only able to grow by a certain percentage every year. And by and large, the 31 states that we're growing in are having double digit growth. And we think that's a very healthy and manageable amount of growth. So we don't outgrow, as Nick Benz likes to say, our, our uh, equipment, our people, and our processes. So we love those teenage growth numbers. Keep buying our beer so we can sustain them for years. And perhaps every year, or other year we can add another state. We'll see how that goes. And if you want to chatter out on the interwebs about your hope to get dogfish there, that's really, really healthy. We have a fellow who's been uh, asking us via the internet every day for I think over a thousand days, is it Justin? Like over three years, which is pretty amazing, uh, which certainly keeps Missouri in our mind as we think about places where we're loved but not yet available. So keep that up and that's how you find out. All right, here we go. All right, here's a question for Ask Dogfish from our good friend Sean Null. Who do you think over the last 20 years is the most influential in brewing in Philadelphia? My answer would be George Hummel. That's him speaking. I tend to agree. George Hummel is probably an under-recognized outside of Philadelphia, Philadelphia beer celebrity. He and his wife Nancy own the amazing pioneering homebrew store, I believe on Samson Street in downtown Philly called Home Sweet Homebrew. And when I first opened Dogfish Head, I was so young and naive, I didn't realize professional brewers could order their ingredients in big volumes from wholesale companies. And I drive my pickup truck up to Philadelphia and buy bags at, wholes at retail prices from George of grains, of hops, of uh, specialty ingredients, yeast as well. And he was really kind to me and helped me on my journey. And so I, I agree, mad props to George Hummel. If you're thinking about getting into home brewing and you live in Philadelphia or near there, check out Home Sweet Homebrew. Bye guys. Okay, next question is from Jim Patrick. Does Sam still do any five gallon or 10 gallon brewing? I'm specifically wondering if he brews at home or if he has a small scale setup at Dogfish. Uh, we have an awesome set of tools here at Dogfish. Uh, in descending order, we have our 200 barrel brew house where we do most of our core beers that you find in the marketplace. Our 100 barrel brew house where we do most of the specialty batches that you'll see in 750s or, or one-offs like uh, Fort that come out maybe once a year. Um, and then we also have our two barrel brew house in Rehoboth and our half barrel Sabco uh, here in Milton. I don't know how to brew on the 100 barrel or 200 barrel brew house. I'm very proud of the technical capabilities of the folks on our brewing staff that know how to run that beautiful, world-class, uh, big brewing systems here. But my favorite days at work, uh, and I had one two weeks ago at our pub, and I got one coming up here in uh, early June, are the days when I get to brew on the two barrel brew house or the half barrel brew house. Um, we helped to design the Sabco two barrel system, the Nano Magic that Sabco now sells that we love and we have four barrel, four barrel tanks so we double batch into that at our pub and those are my favorite days at work. So yes, I still brew at Dogfish with my coworkers. I uh, love coming up with new recipes, even if it's just to make once to serve at our pub, but sometimes, oftentimes, those are the recipes that make it into national distribution the next year, uh, which is a reason to come to our pub and try the pub exclusives and be part of our sort of focus group uh, family. Next one. This one's from Christian Bear. It's, can we look forward to any more beers from the music series? And the answer is hell yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Bitches Brew out this year. We just did uh, uh, the Beer Thousand with our pals from Guy by Voices. Right now, here coming into summer, we just released the, the latest and greatest batch of American Beauty, uh, the honey and almond granola forward pale ale that we do with our pals in the Grateful Dead. We're psyched that they're getting back together with shows in Chicago and California with Trey from Fish uh, sitting in for Jerry. Uh, so look for American Beauty. And yes, there are bands that we're, uh, you know, kind of chatting with right now and we'll see uh, where any of those chats go. But yeah, there'll be future beers. Uh, 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 uh. Here's a thoughtful one from Carl Berger. 
In the mid-90s, Immortale was, for me, such a groundbreaking experience. That's nice. Uh, there was no other beer like it, and today there still isn't. One night in the winter of 1998, I was having at home on a weekend a few Immortales. This is 11% alcohol, buddy. When, when I began to hallucinate electric purple-blue lightning bolts radiating across a whitewashed wall in my living room, inducing from what I can only imagine were the high amounts of essential oils in the beer orienting from the juniper berries. So I guess my question is, thanks? With a question mark. Carl, my answer to your question is, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're done, folks. That's a wrap. <laughs>